Find another, uh, just open another window. And here's what I want you to put in. I want you to put in string, and then you can put in protein. You should see string functional protein associated networks. Everybody see that? Okay. Usually, like, sometimes I, I was teaching a high school class once, and uh, I put in string, and all these pictures of string bikinis came up. <laughs> I got everybody's attention real quick. <laughs> Science is fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's great. <laughs> okay. So what I want you to do is, you know, when you run that, window I want you to you know basically click on that and you basically get to this window here and what I want you to do is pick multiple proteins okay so let's go back to our Excel file what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top 200 genes from this gene list. Again, these are genes that are more highly expressed in the triple negative than the other type of cancer. And I'm going to go, I'm going to put my cursor at the very first gene, and then I'm going to go all the way down to 201. I want to get the 200 genes, top 200 genes based on gene expression. Okay, so in mine it's CIP39A1. So I'm going to just hold down my shift and select all that. All right, so I'm going to hit Command C, or you can copy that any way you want. And let's go back to our browser. OK, everybody got that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those, I'm going to paste those genes into that window. This is how easy this stuff is, at least when you're using European tools. In organism, you want peoples, homo sapiens. So be sure to select that. You got to select it, and then you hit select. All right, everybody with me? All right, hit search. This next screen, they're just basically saying, hey, you put in 200 things, and this is showing you what all they recognize, and I'm pretty sure they recognize everything. Maybe, I don't know. I'm, usually, usually, sometimes they won't recognize a couple. Um, usually, you'll get like, if I put in 200, it depends if it comes from RNA-seq, which allows you to get transcripts and aren't really annotated, you know, it, you probably get about 180. So about 20 that don't match up to their database, typically. Okay, so then I'm going to hit continue. This is the fun part. I love this part. Zoom. <laughs> so what are we looking at? Everyone, so this is basically network. So now we've gone from pathways, now we're creating our own networks, our specialized networks. These are the genes that change, that are higher in our negative, or triple negative breast cancer, top 200, and you can see where all these connections are. So if I'm looking at these, so if you go to any of these connections, what you can do is you can look up like, why is it connecting EN1 to ZIC1, right? And by the way, you can move these too. So you can click on the line, and it basically will tell you, well, it's been known to be co-expressed. Uh, there's experimental data. There's homologs found in other organisms that they're known to interact. And that it's been mentioned, both these, these genes have been mentioned, uh, co-mentioned in different scientific abstracts, right? This is the information based on its database it's using to connect those. The more lines it has, the more pieces of evidence it has to connect those. 
And basically what we're using is their database to create this network. This is a great program. Does it ever be sure to be sure to bookmark stream. You will use it. You should use it. If you don't use it, you're silly. <laughs> if I'm looking at this network, what do you what do you think the important genes are? Say that again. Yes, perfect. The hubs is what we call them, right? Look at this. Holy crap. If that's not a uh, uh, godfather, I don't know what is. Look at that. EGFR. And if you look at triple negative breast cancer, right? They don't have estrogen receptors. They don't have progesterone receptors. They're not human uh, epidermal growth receptors. No, actually, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Dermal growth factor perception. The HER2, what is HER1 and HER2? Human epithelial receptor? I don't know. Something like that. What you find if you do the research is what you'll find is that the EGFR, basically, because it doesn't have that estrogen growth signaling, it, use, it utilizes EGFR. And we can totally see this on this network. And we can see how important it is. There's some other ones in here. You know, look at this. You know, KERT 6A, it's keratin, right? That's a different cell type. These are basically what you're also seeing is different cell types. These are things that go on the outside of the cell. There's a lot of, basically what I'm trying to tell you, there's a lot of information that can tell you what's going on with this cancer right here. So not only can we look at it down here, but let's go back, go go down to the bottom. I know you'll... I, is it on your, is it a legend? Is it showing you the legend thing? Mm -hmm. So this will basically tell you, this gives you an idea of like, what's going on? What do the nodes mean? You know, you know, based on the colors, what kind of interactions do they have? All this stuff. We can go to settings and we can say, hey, you know, we can make this more, the criteria for the connections more strict so that, you know, we, we need more pieces of evidence so you can go, I'm just going to leave it median confidence. But what I like to do is I, I like to disable, let's see. The second one, when it says network display options, go high disconnected nodes in the network. And then go up and then go update. So you'll see, and it'll basically get rid of all the things that aren't connected to something else on the network. Kind of cleans it up a little bit. You can see it a little better. Okay. Now I'll go to the next one, analysis. This is what, what I love about string is not only does it give you that network function and you can visualize and you can see, you know, again, it's like putting those pixels together, right? I can see how all these things are connected and I can find these like hubs that are connected to all these different things. But if we look down here, but it also will give you basically do the pathway analysis for you. So we, it basically recognized everything except one of our genes. It expected that based on the 200 genes that we put in, it would expect that you should get 85 connections. We got 310 connections. The odds of that happening are less than one times 10 to the negative 16. Again, this isn't random chance. What we found is a connected group. It's basically a, a gang that we've expanded by doing a statistical test. And now we've got the gang responsible for triple negative breast cancer, or at least a good part of that. And you can go down here and you can see what are the biological things that are overrepresented. Um, I usually like to do, if we go down here, we count in network, I usually like to see it from top to bottom. But this is kind of telling you what's going on and we can color certain things. We definitely see cell death involved in this. Lots of cell death. Lots of apoptotic genes. Again, remember, they are higher in the triple negative, which means that the other one is probably, the other form of cancer is probably uh, inhibiting them more. Also, let's see, we can go down here. A lot of these are involved in the extracellular region. And here's what I love, is if you go down here, reference publications, 
Basically what it's doing is it's pulling out papers that also showed overrepresented, basically have the same genes as you do, but more like, like you wouldn't get that by random chance. So basically what it's doing is pulling out papers that pulled out some of the similar genes that we just pulled out. Are these associated with cancer? Heck yeah. Ooh, look at this one. Triple negative breast cancer profile from gene to microRNA in relation to eth ethnicity. What this is telling me as a bioinformatician, I know I'm working on breast cancer. I'm not stupid. You know, I can read things before I do. As I look through here, this makes sense. And what this tells me is what we did was right. Like what we're going to do is we're getting real, basically, you know, results that we can actually use. Again, you sell, sell the cell junctions. You know, that's huge. You tick that. Uh, you know, keg pathways. Pathways in cancer was the number one top one, right? Basically, what I'm trying to show you is we're not just pulling out random things, random genes. Like, this all makes sense. And that if we use software like this, we can basically put together those pixels and find gangs and find networks, which helps us explain the situation. And then when we want to work on our data, like, we have something to work with, right? Glycoproteins, intermittent filaments, this is all connections, lots and lots of connections. But you can see here, we can kind of basically color it. And you, you, what you'll find is things that are associated with a particular biological class tend to be connected together. Okay. Any questions on this so far? Okay. How many people are going to use R2 genomics to do some of their research? Heck yeah. This is a really good one. So I'm going to show you one more thing you can do with this, and then I'll leave you alone. <laughs> I found that if you can end a three-hour workshop early, people like you. Okay. So let's go back to, let's go to R2 again. 